Well, not only do we have the Howard County Executive on the show this morning, but we also have the new elected head of the Maryland Association of Counties, Mr. Mako, President. Mr. President. Because Calvin Ball was named that just uh, just a couple of uh, days ago, I believe. And mm -hmm. he joins us now here on the C4 and Brian Neiman Show. Good morning. Happy and New Year. Congratulations to you. Good morning. Happy New Year and happy Friday, Junior. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Uh, you, you were elected as the uh, the Mako president. I, I assume that you only needed one vote on that, right? It wasn't like 15 votes. And, uh, and I was able to get it done with one vote. Very good. Very good. Uh, more on that coming up. But I do want to ask you because the legislative session is underway in Annapolis. We've got uh, Wes Moore is being sworn in. Uh, next week, you've got a Democratic governor now. You've you've obviously got uh, control. The Democrats do in uh, in Annapolis. Uh, what are your priorities? What are you hoping to get? What are you asking for out of Annapolis as the Howard County Executive, Mr. Ball? Well, I am so excited to be working with the Moore Miller administration, and I think that you know we have an opportunity, an opportunity to make further investments and in smart investments in education to create the best teaching and learning environment for all of our students and educators. And I think we've seen with things like the Great Resignation and how people work, investments in workforce, making sure that uh, people are able to go to work and not just have jobs, but create careers and businesses and invest in economic development. I think the big uh, word of the year that I would like to see us work on is expanding opportunity. We're talking with Howard County Executive Dr. Calvin Ball. Once again, he is now the president of the Maryland Association of Counties Mako. And I saw the shout out that you got from uh, Governor-elect Westmore at that gathering that you had where uh, he's a fraternity brother of the, gov oh. of the incoming governor. So they have, you have inside track there, don't you, Dr. Ball? <laughs> I am excited for my fraternity brother. Uh, he really not only represents all of the brothers of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity <laughs> Incorporated well, but the rest of the D9 and, frankly, all Marylanders. Well, on that note, though, I do want to talk with you because we've talked with past presidents of MAKO on our show before about the Kerwin funding bill, of course, the Bridge to Excellence bill, whatever the name of it is now, and the responsibility that locals are going to have to have to meet their part of that obligation. What are you talking with the folks in Annapolis to make sure that it's not too burdensome on the people you represent, those local jurisdictions, when it comes to putting up your end of the our current funding formula? Well, I think there are two prongs that I'd like us to focus on. First, uh, as you astutely noted, ensuring that uh, we do have appropriate sharing of how we invest, and that is at the state level, because frankly, the boards of educations are separately elected bodies and they're governed by state laws. So frankly, the county executives and the mayor and commissioners have very little say, which leads into the next thing, is transparency in education spending. We saw, especially during the pandemic, uh, so much funding coming from federal, state, uh, local uh, leaders to education, and I think everyone should better understand how how those monies were spent mm -hmm. so that we can uh, be respectful of taxpayer dollars. And if we have goals, meet those goals together. All right. But what to his point, C4's point, I mean, th there is going to have to be a money component of it from from the counties, which has been said in the past it was going to be difficult and it was going to be burdensome. Have have you talked about that? And, and, and what is the money that we're talking about? And, and how are ways you can do this without raising taxes in a major way? It is going to be quite a challenge. Uh, however, most of us spend, uh, if not about half, the majority of our funding in education, education-related services. And so we recognize that it is an investment in the future. However, looking at things such as how do we count steps and colas, that is something that uh, we need to tie down because through the blueprint, uh, things like steps aren't necessarily counted. So it disincentivizes investment in that way. And when it comes to how we're actually compensating our educators, we want to make sure that we're compensating them fairly. If we're all at $60,000 per year starting salary, uh, what happens when uh, different entities and different jurisdictions are uh, seeking educators? So I think we need to really work on the details. We all agree on the goals to uh, move Kerwin and 
move education forward. But I think we need to fi finalize some of the details. Howard County Executive Calvin Balls on board with us. And yes, he is an educator by a trade before he became county, county councilman and then county executive. And county executive, we had President Senate Bill Ferguson on the show on Tuesday. And one of the things he is introducing is a grant program, and once this funded at state level, to really bolster tutoring, which I know is a big part of Kerwin as well in terms of having additional uh, opportunities for kids to, to tutor. So what he's saying is, like if Howard County, if your jurisdiction wanted to get access to this money, you come with a program like extra hours in the school day or maybe even Saturday school to catch our kids up from sort of learning loss in the pandemic. Is that something that you'll be talking with your members about, about trying to help catch us up academically? Well, I'm, I'm very glad you noted that because during the pandemic, a lot of our students fell behind. Uh, they weren't able to learn as effectively virtually, and they needed that face-to-face, in-class time instruction. And so many of them did fall behind. And I think tutoring is not only going to help many of those students throughout, of course, Howard County, the state of Maryland, but the nation catch up. But it also helps empower some of our students who are ahead to help uh, their fellow students and I think it might even uh, done well put a couple dollars in their pocket and help them understand uh, the component of service and helping everyone because you know a rising tide lifts all boats so I am very supportive of that notion of tutoring I just wondered if you could uh, drill down a little bit more on your initial answer to my first question when you when you said uh, you wanted more opportunity what do you, what do you mean by that what, what opportunity that are you specifically looking or thinking about well, I think when we're looking at small, minority, women-owned businesses, uh, breaking down some of the barriers so that people aren't just working two and three jobs, but uh, creating careers. When we're looking at uh, improving uh, and expanding the workforce on some of these uh, areas that we need more workers, like health care, like uh, cybersecurity, making sure that we break down those barriers to education and certification. Um, I think just expanding all the ways, whether it's via transportation so that people can get to and from where they want to go, uh, making sure that we address the that last mile and, and broadband so that there is digital equity, all of the ways that people can expand to become their very best selves but somehow feel um, – uh, those barriers and feel like they are left behind. Breaking those barriers and making sure that they can expand that opportunity. Howard County Executive Calvin Ball is on board with us, and your first vice president is Baltimore County Executive Johnny Oshevsky. And from the county executive level, since you all are two top officers in MACO, uh, we know that Governor, Governor elect Wes Moore talked about 11 of Maryland's 24 jurisdictions saw a rise in crime, violent crime over the last, you know, couple of years. Where was where is criminal, uh, you know, justice not in your agenda in terms of looking to get help from the state to help play, not just Baltimore City, but some of these other places where they seen a rise in crime? Well, MACO uh, has a board of directors that's made up of about 16 county elected officials. And as you noted, uh, County Executive Olszewski is my first vice president. I have a second vice president from Queen Anne's, secretary from Frederick, treasurer from Dorchester, and uh, immediate past president is from Baltimore City. And I think we know that not only do our neighborhoods have to be safe, but people have to feel safe. And if they don't feel safe, all the other issues fall by the wayside. And so we need to ensure that uh, we're investing in our public safety officials. It's challenging to hire police officers these days. Uh, I think ever since we've seen um, the complexity of policing change over the last few years, whether it's issues surrounding things like uh, Fred, the Freddie Gray incident or human trafficking or cybercrime, all of the things that have gotten more challenging and more complex, making sure that we recruit and we retain our officers, we empower them, uh, working on things like body-worn cameras, which I think people recognize that it is an opportunity for law enforcement and for the community to see transparency and empowerment. And so I think these are some of the things that we can work on, and, and making sure that we have centralized resources for body-worn cameras is actually one of MACO's legislative priorities. Hmm. You know, you talked about the education component of in the Board of Education. There is a controversial uh, bill that has been proposed um, by two um, Howard County delegates, I believe. Um, uh, it was uh, Clarence Lamb. Is mm -hmm. he a senator? Senator, 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 senator Lamb. Lamb. I'm sorry, Senator Lamb. That, that would basically uh, allow 
the school board, the elected school board officials to be done by senatorial districts and essentially would allow you, the county executive or any county executive, not just you, any county executive uh, to determine um, a couple of members who sit on the board. Do you think that's the right way to go or should school board members be directly elected by the people? I definitely understand uh, some of the thinking behind that legislation, ensuring that uh, we do have geographic diversity, that we have uh, diversity at every level. Because oftentimes what we see in some of the school boards is um, uh, a lot of folks who either come from the same neighborhoods or from the same uh, school of thought. And so I understand uh, the thinking. I think that there needs to be an expanded community conversation because we want to empower the voters. We want to make sure that the voters' voices are heard and that when we have, as we talked about just a little bit earlier, uh, so many resources. I mean, here in Howard County, our school system has a billion dollars uh, that they get federal resources, state resources. It is such a large enterprise. We want to have good people who are thoughtful and who uh, exercise fiduciary responsibility. Well, do you, know, you don't trust the people to pick those right people then? I mean, why not then just put up a map of, of say, have, have districts like you have in the House of Delegates or in the state Senate, have districts for, for the board members, but still be elected by the people? Why do you, why would you or any executive, I'm not just putting it on you, why should any executive get to determine who sits on the board? Isn't that what the, the people want? Isn't this the way that it's been going across the country? Well, I think that's probably the direction in which you'll see that legislation go. I know that there's been uh, a lot of uh, conversation and some concerns about that direction, and I'm very confident that uh, our delegation is listening to the people and going to come up with solutions that balance uh, all of the issues and concerns. Finally, County Executive uh, Calvin Ball, also the Maryland Association of County's new president of this organization, rep representing all 24 of Maryland's uh, local jurisdictions. I would ask, and we talked to President Senate about this, that your entity make youth violence and, and juvenile justice a real center point of discussion. We are seeing a tremendous rise in juvenile crime, not just here in the city, but across many jurisdictions. And I really believe we're in a crisis moment, uh, County Executive, where our kids under the age of 18 are doing horrific things. And, and some of it's COVID, you know, what happened there. But other things, we need to address issues with juveniles. I agree with you 100 percent. And frankly, that's a lot of the issues that we talked about uh, when it comes to education, when it comes to creating jobs, when it comes to opportunity. All of those things reignite the flames of hope in our young people. And I think when they're hopeful for their future, when they recognize that the decisions that they make will either positively or adversely impact that future, then they'll make better decisions. And then there are the physical and mental health challenges that we see. So when we make sure that they have a couple of dollars in their pocket, when we make sure that they're on the educational right track, when we make sure that they can become their very best selves, and when we help them address some of the mental and physical health challenges, I think we're going to see a decrease in that juvenile crime, and we're going to see uh, safer streets. Last question for me, any chance of a tax cut for the residents <laughs> of Howard County? <laughs> Well, we are definitely going to ensure that we look at all of the different options and invest the resources appropriately, whether that's tax cuts or managing uh, whatever resources that we have uh, effectively as we always have. Yeah, I, I got it. Okay, thank you, County Executive. <laughs> Executive. Dr. Calvin Ball, always great. Of course, congratulations yeah, on now heading up MAKO. And we look forward to talking with you through the session because it's gonna, I think it's going to be a big session to establish where you you are with the new governor and how things move forward, okay? I appreciate it, guys. Have a great one. I appreciate it. He's always yeah. the happy warrior.